Well, thank you guys for tuning in to Chicago Prayer and Hope. Well, we pray for you all because we believe in the power of prayer, because of praying the true in the living God of the universe, who hear the prayers and who answer them all in his own perfect timing, because his timing is perfect and his timing will always be perfect. Amen. Amen. And also, we share the good news of Jesus Christ right out of the truth and act of the living word of God, which brings the free gift of salvation to you all if you believe by faith alone. And if you repent of your sins, and if you do all that, it offers you the best gift of all which you can ever receive, which is eternal life of Jesus Christ forever in His presence when you die. Friends, praise God for the free gift of salvation. Give Him praise for that. That's good news. Today we're going to be talking, we're going to be in the book of Psalms, Psalms 103, verse 13. So if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to grab them, flip along to that passage with us, or turn on your Bibles and flip it as well. Today we're going to be talking about how the Father has compassion over us, our, our Father in Heaven has compassion on us. Um, you know, how our fathers on earth have compassion over, over us, and comparing it to how the Lord has compassion on us who fail him. So we're going to be, so let me open this up in a brief order, brief order prayer before we jump in. Let's pray. God, teach us something new about this topic. Teach us to the compassion that our fathers have and the compassion versus the compassion that you have, God. God, we love you. Would you help us love you more? Amen. Are you guys ready? Psalms 103 verse 13 says this. It says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Come on, friends. What does this mean? How does this start out? It says, as a father has compassion on his children. What does compassion mean? Compassion means love, gentleness. A father loves you. Your father loves you. He cares for you. He wants what's the best. I want to protect you. Because your father on earth has compassion on you, his children. So the Lord, the Lord in heaven, to the Lord, our father, has compassion on those who fear him. So you guys got the compassion part, how the Lord has compassion on those, because they probably didn't get the last part, on those who fear him. You might be like saying, wait, what? So God doesn't want us to fear. You're correct. God doesn't want us to fear things of this world. He wants us to fear Him. What I mean by fearing Him, you may be like saying, wait, fear Him? Like, I thought God wants us to love Him and pursue Him. How can we fear Him plus love Him? What He means is have a righteous fear of Him. Not like, oh yeah, you're afraid, but have a righteous fear knowing that he is powerful. God gets the final say-so, whether you believe it or not, whether you like it, actually, whether you like it or not, God gets the final say-so. So we are called to fear him, knowing that he is just, he is powerful, and he can crack down the hammer at any time. That's why we fear him. Because he is Lord of all, and he is in control. That's why we fear him. So what's my encouragement for you today? What's my challenge for you today? My encouragement for you today as both fathers, your father, your earthly father, then your father in heaven, have compassion. But the difference is, the encouragement is to remember that God's compassion lasts forever. But here's the twist. God wants you to remember that he's in control. To, to remember that he's in control, we are called to fear him. Not be afraid of him, we are running and hiding, but have a righteous fear of him. So what's my encouragement for you today? To remember that the God is in control and he has so much compassion over you and that he loves you. And I pray that you would see him. Don't see him as a guy that's cracking down the hammer because you sinned. See him as a loving father and as a compassionate father, but fear him as well. But don't focus on the whole fearing part. Fear him, definitely. But get, don't get caught up in the fearing him part. I don't want you to get caught up in that. Sometimes people can get caught up in that. And so, just remember that God is with you. He loves you. He has so much compassion over you. Amen?
Hey man, I want to move into the next part of this video and give you the chance to receive Christ today for the first time or come back to Christ. We do this, we give this invitation out at the end of every video that we make because we truly believe that this is the most important decision that one can ever truly make with life or that one has already made with life is by placing their faith in Jesus Christ alone and accepting the free gift of salvation that he offers you and that he offers me. So I want to do this invitation right now for you. So please repeat these words after me from the silence of your own heart. Father God, I confess I'm a sinner. I confess my need for you, God. Would you please come into my life, Lord? God, I cannot do this life without you, Lord. You're the only hope I have. Father God, so I repent of all my sins, and I turn to you, and I accept you as my Savior. Amen. Well, if you just prayed this prayer today for the first time with us, or recommitted your life to Christ today, then I want to welcome you in the family of God. Welcome you back in the family of God. The scripture says, when one walks in the family of God, or when one walks back in, heaven rejoices, and I rejoice along with you as well. And I've also been praying for this very moment because this is truly one of the most important decisions that one can ever truly make with life or the one has already made with life by placing the faith in Jesus Christ alone and accepting the free gift of salvation that he offers you and that he offers me. So I want to welcome you in the family of God or welcome you back. Um, well, friends, if you just prayed this prayer today for the first time with us or recommitted your life to Christ today, I encourage you to reach out to me or to one of our team members because we want to be praying for you. We don't want to mock you at all. We don't want to press you. All we just want to do is walk alongside you be praying for you first and foremost, and then give you next steps and next resources to take. But first and foremost, we want to be praying for you because we believe the first thing that we are called to do is pray. If we don't pray, then we are like saying, God, we don't trust you. We need to pray first. Then we want to give you next steps and next resources. My friends, do you mind if I bless you today before I send you all on your way into a new day? Would you put your hands up to receive the blessing of Jesus? May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, and may you never forget just as your Father on us has compassion over you, his children, so the Lord has compassion on all who fear him. Friends, don't get caught up in focusing on the fearing part. Remember that God has compassion for us and foremost. Amen? Amen. Well, if you guys were blessed by this video, if you guys feel like someone else needs to be encouraged by this video as well, would you please do me a favor, click on that share button and share this hope with someone, share this good news this morning. If you guys just need prayer for your life or hope, never hesitate to reach out to me or one of our team members. We would love to be praying for you, truly praying for you. I'd love to just talk to you, answer any questions you have. And until next time, keep Christ number one and have a very, very blessed day. Much love, y'all.